teachers and friends, I am Andriana Avila. Today I'm going to talk about my senior project, which is about religion and how it affects me. I chose this project because I felt that religion plays a big part in my life. Because I grew up in a family who, want, who really practices their religion. And I tend to question it a lot. And I thought this was the only topic where I could really open up and establish what I really believe. I didn't I didn't like my religion, and I thought I could use my senior project to actually break away from it. And I wanted to know if I really needed a religion in the future. I didn't feel attached to my religion because my beliefs in life didn't exactly match with my religion, which is Catholicism. Process. So when I had established what my topic was, I started talking to Teacher Raf Plaza, my advisor for guidance, so please don't ask questions. <laughs> Let me books to read to help me with my research. And the first book that I finished was How Great Religions Began by Joseph Gear. I found this book as the most helpful of all. Because in this book I was able to get a glimpse of each of the each of each religion that I wanted to study, which were Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And in this book, I fell in love with Buddhism. After reading that book, I found it easier to research in the internet because I, because I somehow got a glimpse of all the religions that I wanted to study. I researched about the gods of each religion and their beliefs. I was also able to interview two Christian community priests, Reverend Father Pablo Conman, Reverend Father Hartmut Boris. They were the ones who introduced me to a very open um, Christian religion. I remember them talking about Christian community being their way of life, that their religion actually makes them happy. And they were really open about it. This is when I learned that there is no such thing as hell because God loves us equally, and that God is part of everything, that we need not go to church to actually reconnect with. I was also able to visit the synagogue with class, with class 11 and some of my classmates. There I, was, there I was able to ask a rabbi a question, which he answered happily, and I could hear his deep devotion to his religion. Here I learned that their religion cannot exist without their way of life, and their life cannot exist without their religion. After that, I visited a Buddhist temple with my mom's friend. I was expecting the temple to be like in the movies, but it turns out that it was a contemporary Buddhist temple where they practice contemporary Buddhism. And the temple looked more like a hotel. <laughs> there I attended a service offered for, for their ancestors. I found it different, even funny. Because we were, able to, we were asked to chant verses with them, and we didn't even know what we were saying because it was in Chinese. We didn't even have any relations to their dead ancestors. After that service, I was able to talk to Nancy Po, the girl who assisted us. She does not consider herself a Buddhist, but she uses the Buddhist philosophy. And this is where I found out. This is where I found out that um, uh, it could, I could actually be a good Christian Catholic while following the Buddhist philosophy. Because Buddhism is a philosophy, it only becomes a religion when it is adopted by a culture or a tribe. And this opened up my mind to many possibilities. With that, I was moved. They were so open. Their philosophy depends on, their on your choices, and I fell in love with it even more. After that, I got the chance to talk to Mr. Sonny Niguez about Christianity. He talked about his studies about Christianity, and that opened up my mind even more. And, I felt, and this was a time when I fell in love with Christianity because finally I understood it. Challenges. Throughout my project, I had challenges that I had to overcome. Firstly, my fear that my parents won't be as supportive or I felt that my topic was a bit too touchy for me and for them because they really practice their religion. But after talking to them, I was able to receive the support that I needed. 
after resolving that fear, I discovered that there was something else growing inside me. The fear of being alone. The realization that I would be alone in this journey, that no one else can understand and answer my question but myself. But because of that, and because of that, I started to doubt. I felt like giving up. Because of that, I stopped working, but I felt pathetic. And I, I just stopped believing in myself. And while all that, all that was happening, my Lola passed away, making me more depressed. And I felt like the universe was giving up on me. That God was punishing me and that God hates and was abandoning me. I got mad at God, questioning him why this had to happen to me and my Lola, my grandmother. Why me? Why my family? And why my grandmother? Why do we have to suffer? I felt it was so unfair that, that I just gave up, letting it go, abandoning God, thinking he abandoned me. Because I knew no one else would understand my pain, I ended up talking and praying to him started to pray, asking for help, for strength, and courage to face what, what lies in me, in front of me. And after a few days, I, I just stopped crying, getting over my sufferings. I stood up and I fought. And this may sound really cheesy, but this, this is when I realized that God has granted me what I was praying for. And I realized that God never abandons us. It is us who abandons Him. That's why we feel hopeless and depressed. He's always here for us like a best friend. And this was the time when I started to believe in Him. Because at last, I was able to connect with God. Findings. How religion affected me. For my findings, I researched four different religions. And here I found out that religion is a way of life. That, is a, that, that it is a reconnection to a higher being. Because if God was the giver of life, then before we were sent down here on earth, we were one with Him. Religion is a way to reconnect with him. For my artistic output, I made my own interpretations of each religion, putting what I've learned in colors. For Judaism, where the mouse is pointed, the yellow color represents Yahweh, the one and only God. And the brown paint represents the people. The green, the yellow, and the blue represents their law and tradition, laws and traditions without their laws and traditions or their way of living, their religion wouldn't exist. And the white streaks uh, represents the grace of Yahweh, which helps them go through their day-to-day -day obstacles. They also believe that one day a great Messiah, their Savior, will come and save them from all the sufferings that they have, that they have experienced and is still experiencing, reuniting them all in the Holy Land, Jerusalem. I find this religion as the strongest religion from all the religions that I have studied because I felt that because I, I sorry because after sorry because after all the destruction and sufferings that they have experienced their faith in Yahweh still stands strong so I didn't really feel attached to this religion because I felt it was a bit too much of a tradition Buddhism. The Buddhists believe and follow the teachings of the Buddha. They do not see Buddha as a god, but rather a teacher. In Buddhism, they do not believe in a god, because for them there is no god. They see life as full of suffering. To live is to suffer. But there is a way to actually escape all that suffering by following the middle path. By following the middle path, you can achieve your nirvana or your heaven. And follow the middle path, which is also known as the Noble Eightfold Path. You have to be aware. You have to have first, right view, second, right intentions, third, right speech, fourth, right actions, fifth, right livelihood, sixth, right effort, seventh, right mindfulness, eighth, right concentration. And if you do not follow this, which is your choice, you would likely have your consequence, which is what they call karma. For them, your karma can come after this lifetime. Your karma depends on how badly you messed up. Uh, and you can come back and you can come back here on earth as an animal, which is the lowest ranking of the beings according to them here on earth. 
So in my painting, I tried putting in the life and all its sufferings, which is the color blue. Blue because I felt that uh, blue is such a melancholic color that it could represent suffering. And as Goethe stated, blue is, the, is darkness dampened by light. Yellow being the nirvana. The middle one represents the middle path. Yellow because I thought yellow is such a happy color. It could represent the happiness and peace. Again, according to Goethe, yellow is light dampened by darkness. Islam. Here I tried painting the people, which is the brown part, which portrays that man is here on earth. He lives to serve and to serve Allah. And the white and blue streak on there is Muhammad being the last prophet that was sent down here on earth by Allah to deliver a message. And the yellow part is Allah being the one and only Almighty God. The Muslims have five pillars, which is the foundation of their religion. First, they believe that there is no God but Allah. Second, they have to pray five times a day. Third, they have to give alms. Fourth, they have to fast to cleanse themselves. If they have to go to Mecca once a year for pilgrimage. Same with Judaism. I wasn't really attracted with Islam because, again, I felt like it was too close. Too much rules and traditions that if I convert myself into a Muslim, I, would, I wouldn't feel as free. Because I have to remember and follow so many rules. Christianity. <laughs> Here I try to portray the three forms of God, which are... God the Father, God the Son, God the Father. The middle one is God the Son. Uh, um, yeah, that the is God the Holy Spirit. God the Father being the Creator and the Giver of Life, which I painted red and yellow because I see Him more of an outside, the Creator and the Giver of Life, the one who sees everything. Then God the Holy Spirit, um, the God within us. That's why I tried painting it blue because. So the blue is more an inward color. Christ being the middle, having both characteristics, and him being being the great individual, he taught us how to live. This picture is just the general picture of Christianity, because Christianity consists of different sects, good and evil. Uh, these two will not exist without one another. Good and evil exist because of us, because of our free will of our decisions. And that can mislead us in life. And from that, good and evil can come out. And with our mistakes, we should, we should be able to learn how to, how to create something good out of it. Too much of something can lead to something evil, even good itself. We have to balance things out. And sometimes, something good can come out of evil. Just like when we make mistakes, that doesn't mean that we have committed a sin. Rather, you can learn something out of it. And from that, it becomes good. I painted them this way because good and evil comes in different forms. And I just painted one dark because um, you could differentiate them. In the middle is me. How I see everything. Uh, reflections. All my life, I felt that religion is not a person's own opinion. Option. It was like an obligation that will please people, that will make you look good. Despite my family's best intentions, I felt that I was forced to be a Catholic, that I had no option, other option. The thing is, I realized that somehow I could like my religion if I truly understand it. But because I did not know enough, do not know enough, and I have been forced, I became disconnected from my religion. And it's hard to believe something that you cannot connect to. Recently, I had my first communion after being convinced by my parents. I thought I'd give it a try so it could, um, you know, help me understand my religion. Unfortunately, I had to go through it without fully understanding it. And I was, I was supposed to have a, a catechism classes, but it didn't happen. So I was just asked to read the book. Also, during my first confession, the priest told me not to commit mistakes. Because these are sins. I didn't think that was right. To me, making mistakes yeah. help you learn from this. Yeah. 
See, freedom is very important to me. However, when I was growing up, I thought that religion really has a big role in my life. I was taught how to pray every night before I go to bed, every morning when I wake up, and before and after meals. I grew up memorizing prayers such as Hail Mary, Our Father, and Angel of God. This is, this is good because this has been my way of connecting to God. But then in time, I was just reciting these prayers because I felt because I, I was told that if I did not, I won't go to heaven. I was reciting them without even knowing why and without understanding them. My world of education also influenced the way I think. I believe that one has the freedom to be yourself, to think for yourself. And even if they do not teach us religion in school, they make us conscious and aware that there is someone out there. A God or a higher being. They teach us, they teach us to have faith in something. So a person's religion should be his choice. Because if religion is a way of life, we have the right to choose whatever we want to believe here on earth. A religion should not be forced on you. A religion should help you understand all the questions that you ask in life that no one else can ask you. It should be your belief, your understanding of the world, and your life. If I were to choose a religion, I would choose Christianity and the philosophy of Buddhism. Because in Buddhism, I am free to be myself. Life is all up to me, but I do not need to please someone, a god, or something. The Buddhist philosophy is all about you, creating your middle path to achieve your own heaven or your nirvana. I am also drawn to Christianity because I feel that they have the best explanation of who and what God is. And their belief of God fits my belief. But there is only one God, but in three forms. One being the Father who created and gave us life. The God inside us, which is the Holy Spirit, who helps us um, keep the fire going within us. And Christ being the messenger of God who taught us how to live and how and how life is all up to you. Because you have your free will that was given by the Creator. Right now, I feel that I don't belong to a particular religion. Even if I am baptized a Catholic and even if I had my first communion. Catholicism is not my way of life because I do not understand it completely. I do not know much about it. However, with all my beliefs and understanding in life, I think I consider myself as a spiritual person. I do believe in something, someone higher than us. That being that created the world, man, and life. And for me, as long as you believe, as long as you have faith, that is enough. When I was younger, my dad would always tell me that it is better to believe in a God and find out in the end that there is no one to believe in than to not believe and find out in the end that there was something, someone to believe in. And I still believe in that. Because of this project, I was able to open up to possibilities in life because of different beliefs. Because I was able to open up to different religions. Even though I found it, I found it hard to accept the fact that some people are just really born to be religious, and I have to deal with that because that's their faith. That's their view of life. I also learned that there's so much more in this world than believing in one religion, that this world does not consist of one belief, and the truth is no one is right and no one is wrong in terms of their beliefs because this is your own truth. It is what lies in your heart, and it is what you believe in. It's true. And ironically, Pope Francis, the head of my own religion, also states something like this. And I quote, All religions are true because they are true in the hearts of all who believe in them. What other truth is there? What I learned most in this project is to trust in what you believe in. Because what matters most is this. Because in the end, this is what will help you push forward in life. Just like when I what I experienced when my Lola passed away. It was not exactly my religion that helped me reconnect with God, but it was my own faith and spirituality that led me back to Him. I remain open though, but as all things change, my beliefs could change too. 
maybe I'd find my way back to it in freedom. So don't worry, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> Doing this project made me realize that this project is a mini life, a picture, a small clip from our lives, a moment, a glimpse to reality. It was not an easy journey. I mean, it never was. So what, what did I do? I moved, I stood, and I fought. That's what we do. This is our human nature. Moving forward is innate in us. That in the midst of the darkness, there is still that hope fire that keeps on burning that urges you to push forward and to look at the brighter future. I never felt so weak and so strong in my life. But here in this project, I was able to. I was able to feel what it's like to be lower than, than the ground and higher than any mountain. And mostly, when I finally had that reconnection with God, and I was able to see the light ahead of me. That it's not all darkness. In this project, it doesn't matter strong you are, but rather how you face the wave, how you fight your dragons inside you, and how to seek the light in the end, in the midst of your darkness, and keeping it going. To sum it all up, I have learned how to live, enjoy, understand, accept, embrace life, and all the things that are with it. And that sometimes, you just have to let things be. But sometimes, those are wonderful opportunities that somewhere you want to be, with or without a religion. Acknowledgements. I would like to thank the Inigas family who are not here today for letting me stay in their house to paint the Sunny Inigas who guided me with my paintings, the one who helped me open up to Christianity, Tito Ralph for lending me books that really helped me, for sharing his story about religion. My family who supported me all the way and who were open to help me anytime and for letting me open up to different religions. My parents for funding me. My brother who took over some of my chores to just finish this project. To our class sponsors, Miss Camille and Tita Lollet for supporting and cheering us, cheering us on. To my class for sticking by me throughout my whole journey. You guys are the best. And of course, to my one and only mentor, my mother mentor, Ms. Tintin Montes, the one who never gave up on me, even though I was so stubborn, who nagged me to do my work, who scolded me for not doing my work, the one who guided me extensively. Without you, I wouldn't be standing here, and I wouldn't be able to finish my project. Thank you for understanding and accepting me. Thank you.